Denard Robinson will go down as one of the best quarterbacks in college football history. He not only holds countless rushing records as a college QB, but was selected to be the cover athlete of the NCAA 2014 game. And the most interesting part about all of this is that he did this with untied shoelaces. But to fully understand how good Denard Robinson was, we need to take a journey back to his Pee Wee football days when Robinson was just a kid. Denard Robinson, born in 1990 in Florida, was a standout athlete growing up. His speed caught the attention of Pee Wee football coaches and so did this one weird quirk about Robinson, his untied shoelaces. He would be given the nickname Shoelace after starting Pee Wee football and his coaches and parents tried everything from wristbands to athletic tape to keep the shoes on, but nothing worked. So he continued to play without shoelaces. Denard Robinson began his high school football career at Deerfield Beach High School, trying out as a defensive back in ninth grade, but played quarterback for the junior varsity team instead. As a sophomore, he became the varsity team starting quarterback where he would spend the rest of his high school career. His coach, Art Taylor, recognized his talent immediately. Despite concerns about his weird habit of untied shoelaces, coach Taylor wasn't gonna tell a kid who could run a 100 meter dash in 10.4 seconds to tie his shoes. Robinson would excel in the QB position, and in the 2007 state semifinal game, Robinson almost led his team to a win against the top-ranked Miami Northwestern, but they lost 14-12. to In 2008, he had a standout performance against St. Thomas Aquinas, responsible for six touchdowns and passing for 342 yards. As a three-year starter, Robinson accumulated nearly 6,000 total yards, including 4,784 passing yards and over 1,000 1,100 rushing yards. In addition to football, he excelled in track, running 100 meters in 10.44 seconds and finishing third in the 100 meter dash at the 2008 state championships. By the end of his high school career, Robinson had garnered interest from numerous top college programs. Although many schools recruited him as defensive back, he remained steadfast in his desire to play quarterback. Michigan, which initially recruited him for defense, eventually offered him the chance to play quarterback. He would eventually accept this offer, signing with the Michigan Wolverines in 2009. Why Michigan? Because I feel like I'm going to compete at Michigan. <laughs> Although his career started in 2009 at Michigan, it was his breakout sophomore season in 2010 that thrust him into the national spotlight. Robinson would break records in his first two games as a starting quarterback, and this started in the season opener against Connecticut. He rushed for 197 yards and passed for 186 yards, and set Michigan's record for total offense with 383 yards. Robinson would continue to shine, leading Michigan to a 5-0 start, and would set numerous records including the Big Ten record for rushing yards by a quarterback. However, three consecutive losses to Michigan State, Iowa, and Penn State hurt his Heisman campaign. Despite his individual success, Michigan struggled, finishing the regular season with losses to Wisconsin and Ohio State. The following season in 2011, Michigan underwent a coaching change with Brady Hoke, replacing Rich Rodriguez. Despite concerns about how Robinson would fit into a new pro-style offense, he adapted and continued to shine. How's Denard in the new offense? Learning, learning, learning. Uh, just coming here ready to learn. That's the only thing I'm doing right now, trying to learn the offense and uh, getting used to it, trying to get used to it. That's, that's what I'm doing right now. He set the Big Ten record for career rushing yards by a quarterback and became the fourth player in NCAA history to record two seasons with over 2,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards. In the 2011 Gator Bowl, Michigan suffered a 52-14 loss to Mississippi State. His individual performance this year was outstanding, but his overall team performance would make him struggle to win the Heisman. In 2012, Robinson would put up impressive numbers for any QB. Despite having to battle through injuries that season, he suffered nerve damage in his throwing arm and had to switch to running back and wide receiver in addition to playing quarterback. Because of this, his stats would take a dip in his last season with the Michigan Wolverines. Denard played his final game at Michigan on January 1st, 2013 in the Outpat Bowl against South Carolina, and he would surpass Pat Weiss' FBS record for career rushing yards by a quarterback by 15 yards, with a total of 4,495, a record that would later be broken by Navy quarterback Keenan Reynolds, who in 2015 rushed for 4,559 yards. Robinson would end his career at Michigan with seven of the top 10 single game performances in total yards in school history. And with all the attention he was receiving from the media, he would soon be voted the cover athlete of the NCAA 14 game. 
this contest had over 6 million votes, and Robinson would become the first Michigan quarterback and third Wolverine to grace the cover of this game, following Desmond Howard in 2006 and Charles Woodson in 1999. Now that his career in college was over, it was time for the next step, which was the NFL Draft. Robinson's speed and athleticism made him an intriguing NFL prospect, though many teams viewed him better suited for a position other than quarterback. So Robinson embraced this and entered the 2013 NFL Draft as a wide receiver. The Jacksonville Jaguars selected him in the fifth round, dubbing his position an offensive weapon, a role designed to utilize his unique talents across multiple positions. And in his rookie season, Robinson saw limited action, but by 2014, he broke out as a running back. He posted back-to-back -back 100 rushing yard games before an unfortunate foot injury cut his season short. On September 20th, in the second week of the 2015 NFL season, Robinson would injure his MCL against the Miami Dolphins while serving as the backup to TJ Yeldon. This injury caused him to miss the next three games, and on December 13th, Yeldon suffered the same injury against the Indianapolis Colts, making the way for Robinson to tally 75 yards on 14 carries in his first and only touchdown of the season that day. Unfortunately, he didn't really find a good fit in the NFL after his first two seasons. It was a combination of his speed and NFL teams not really knowing how to use that. He was a great quarterback in college, but would that really translate to the NFL? Over the next two seasons, injuries and inconsistent play limited his production, and by 2016, Robinson's time with the Jaguars came to an end. Despite the attempts to extend his playing career with the Chicago Bears and New York Jets, as well as a stint with the Alliance of American Football, Robinson's NFL journey ended after the 2019 season when the AAF ended. But this doesn't mean that his time for contributing to the sport of football was over. After his playing career, Robinson transitioned into coaching, and in 2019, he joined the Jacksonville University as an offensive analyst and assistant special teams coordinator. When the program was unfortunately discontinued, Robinson returned to the Jaguars, but this time as a quality control coach. He later moved into the team's front office, working as a college scouting assistant. And you know how everything comes full circle? Well, in this case, it did. In 2022, Robinson returned to his alma mater, the University of Michigan, as the assistant director of player personnel. He would focus on recruiting and player development, but however, his coaching career would take a setback in 2024 when he resigned following an arrest of operating while intoxicated. It's sad to hear this recent news about a football star, but people make mistakes. As I like to say, the road to success is rarely straight. Hopefully he's able to recover from this arrest and start coaching the Wolverines again, because I would hate to see a downward spiral after this. But ending on a positive note, he did contribute to the Wolverines National Championship in 2023. And who knows, maybe one day he'll help him win another championship.